Hello friends, welcome to another Mixed Media Wednesday. I'm Lee, I'm on the Vicki Wooten Design Team, and this week we're working with florals and moms. So for Mother's Day, I'm doing a double page layout with six photos. Don't usually do double page layouts just because for design team purposes it's not really feasible. Uh, it's harder to showcase two layouts and share that on Instagram unless you do like right page and left page. So. Anyway, I am stamping in Versamark ink and I'm going to heat emboss with white embossing powder from Hero Arts. And this is the floral image from the Color Kaleidoscope Stamp and Die Set. I've created a 7 inch circle template so that I can stamp around that. And the only reason I created the template was because if you cut through the embossing powder it can crack the rest of the image. So I'm using the template as a mask so that I can find the center of the layout and go in a circle that's not like wonky. So I'm pouring the embossing powder back in the jar. I'm going to brush off the excess and heat emboss this. I'm going, this is the first layer with the large floral image from the stamp color kaleidoscope stamp and die set. And then I'll go back and add in some of the single leaves. And I'm using the embossing powder tool again, finding the center. And this is a mask. The great thing about the Vicky Booten stamp sets is they come with these, the die cuts that coordinate, the dies that coordinate. So I die cut out of post-it paper a mask. So I just have to adhere it and then I can stamp around it and it looks like the leaves are behind the, fl the floral images. So this is a really handy tool and I would like to keep it in with my stamp set. I know you guys have probably seen Jennifer McGuire talk about that. When she creates a mask, she keeps it in the stamp set that it coordinates with and that's what I do. I learned that from her. That's a great tip. So we're going to go around and add in all the leaves that, they, that I think would look good and we're doing a second layer of the embossing powder. And you can see the leaves pop out now. And the reason I wanted to do this because the magenta color of this background paper, this paper is called Paper Hearts. And so I'm using the, I'll get to that later. I'm using the ready to use mixed media pad to back this circle that I cut out of the center. Now I'm using the Vicky Booten white gesso and I'm watering it down on an acetate sheet. You see I just sprayed some water and using a paintbrush and the gesso to create some splatters. I'm going to put the mask back so that I don't splatter white on that background paper. So I'm trying to s focus the splatters just around the white heat embossed images, the stamped images. So focusing everything towards the center of the page. If you tap closer to the end of the paintbrush, you can kind of control where the splatters go a little bit better. So you now I take off the mask and I'm adding a little bit more of the gesso, watered down gesso. Just adding in and here I trimmed the circle from the mixed media ready to use mixed media paper pad so that I can still use the other sheet of paper. I just trimmed a circle out of the center of it with my glass mat and my circle cutter. So here you see that that circle is a little bit bigger than the, f than the frame. Now I'm going to break into the Color Kaleidoscope, the Vicki Booten Color Kaleidoscope Ephemera Packs. There's a journaling and an ephemera pack and I'm using the hearts. So I placed three hearts around to create like a floral wreath. And I'm going to use circles, flowers, and hearts around this wreath and these pre-made die cuts I'm going through first so that I can see these are a quick way to add your wreath because they're pre-made. So some I'm going to add the banner across that circle in the center, the cutout circle, just to kind of tie it together. So I'm using, I decided that I wanted to use sunset colors and so we're using red, red violet, magenta and which it and then um, violet, some orange and red orange. And I have that photo there as a placeholder. And this punch is from Paper Studio. 
I think I showed it, but it, I sped it up 20 times, so it probably went too fast. There it is. Okay, so this is real time just to show you the Paper Studio Punch. So this has a confetti of floral shapes in small sizes. So I really like to add different sizes of the same shape just to create unity on the page. And these text hearts that were in the ephemera pack, the die cut pack, are really great to add another element and another pattern. So I'll just go around the punch shapes I punched from the Chasing Rainbows paper, and that's the rainbow stripe paper from the Color Kaleidoscope collection. And these are the striped pieces that I'm adhering now. I like punching shapes from that pattern. It looks really nice because it's muted and sort of an ombre. And of course that's where I got my color scheme from was this this section of the paper with the red orange and the violet and I think it's really pretty. So I'll go around and I just keep punching and adding more die cuts to fill the frame. You see I added those two banner shapes in the center that span the center of the circle. And I'm adding some green leafy bits from the green pattern in the Color Kaleidoscope collection. Just a tiny bit of green to give it a more organic look. I didn't want everything on the page to be in the color scheme. I wanted to add a little bit of, of another color. So a little bit of the light green. And then I'm adding, making sure to add lots of white leafy bits just to tone down. There's a lot of color, strong color on this page. So I add a lot of neutral in that case to kind of tone it down a little bit, make it a little bit easier on your eye. And so I, I keep adding more layers and more layers until I fill in around that. There was about a quarter inch frame between the stamped images and the cutout piece in the center. And I did that on purpose just so that I would be able to fill this with the punch shapes and create this floral wreath. And the great thing about that confetti punch is it punches different sizes, so you can layer them. Now I'm using the gold glaze from Vicki Booten, and I'm going over these Paige Evans thickers, and I'll set those aside to dry. I just wanted to create a gold title that says Mom. Now I'm adding Sticky Thumb American Crafts foam tabs to the back, and the in the top left corner of the shot, you see those, The what I just picked up is the watercolor stickers from the Field Notes collection and I'm using those to kind of add a watercolor effect and I ripped that off and kind of moved it in more just because I felt like it needed to go to more towards the center. So I'm adding the little sprigs and now you'll see I'm going to use craft foam because I didn't want to use a full foam tab thickness and I'm using the American Crafts Super Sticky Red Tape and craft foam to create like a almost shaker pocket looking backing. And so I'll use the red tape on one side of the craft foam, trim it to the size of the tape. I just found that that's a little bit easier than trying to guess and then having the tape too wide. So I just lay the tape on the craft foam and trim directly to the edge of the tape. So I, the great thing about the craft foam is it's not that thick and you can bend it around the circle easily. So there is the almost finished. You get an idea. It's starting to come together. You see the color scheme. And all I have to do is adhere the top side now that I like how that looks, the top side of the tape. And I actually used a whole entire roll of tape, which is great. I mean, hey, finally used up a product, right? <laughs> using up my stash. So now I'm using the piercing tool to just remove. I find it's easiest to re remove that red liner from the tape with a piercing tool. So I'm showing you how that has some dimension and that's my focal image. It's going to be that picture of me and mom staring off into the sunset. Now I'm adding the puffy stickers to Add embellishment to the center of all the flowers. I feel like it just finishes them off and gives a different element instead of just paper. So I like to do that. Now I'm adding the title with a T-square. Now that it's dried, that gold glaze dries really well on these thickers. 
and I added some iridescent glitter texture paste to the smaller tiny flowers and here are those circles that I had watercolored with art crayon in violet red violet so it really works with the sunset color scheme there's some red orange and this is not a color scheme I would ever pick but I saw Vicki Booten do on her one of her Facebook lives she did a sunset with the orange the pink the violet and I was like oh you know what I need to break out of my box there and try a new color scheme so I really like this now here you see I'm adding once again iridescent the iridescent texture paste to the center of some of those smaller flowers now I'm punching that rainbow paper the chasing rainbows I'm trying to punch as much as I can from that because I really love that just is so pretty and that's my color scheme so I'm taking the paper hearts paper which is this magenta paper and I'm trimming it I think it's about three inch strip so that I can continue and y'all this is how I'm going to create my double page spread so you have the large floral wreath on the left and then I wanted to create a me meandering kind of meandering ho strong horizontal line of floral images and tuck in my other five photos so there'll be a total of six photos on this layout but there's still lots of white space I love the ledger paper which is side note from the color kaleidoscope collection and I'm adding lots of the light green leafy bits like I did on the floral wreath on the left just to tie everything in now I'm going to fold back that side and I'll end up hand stitching some cross stitches on that the back of the pattern has the hearts and I really like it because it's like the story is a kind of peek into into the inside of my heart so that kind of works that's why there's a lot of hearts on the page so that love you title from the epoxy I placed the love you title and the black and white photo together on the right because I knew they were going to go there and so I'm going to go about tucking the rest there's the rest of the photos these are from my childhood it's got that 70s retro vibe anybody else remember rust and avocado and harvest gold colored appliances <laughs> that's totally what that top right photo the colors it just works with the sunset color scheme so I'm just adding kind of you can see how I'm going meandering up and down to kind of create the horizontal line but it has more organic look because I'm not going just straight across so I'm adding lots of layers of the floral punch shapes and foam tabs for all the photos these circles are punched the photos are punched into circles that are two inches and I'm adding the banner shapes to tie, tie in with the left banner in the center of that wreath and those are from the die cut pack as well in the color kaleidoscope collection and once that iridescent texture texture paste has dried I can add it to the center of these flowers on the right you can kinda see it on camera it's iridescent and shiny I'm adding more of the text hearts and then trimming the edge of that photo since it was such a small photo like some ret some retro some vintage photos are not normal sizes so I just usually punch them into shapes and I'm adding more of the sprigs and more of the berries and the watercolored stickers to tie everything in to coordinate with the left side just adding layers and layers and it's a lot of fun to continue to add more bits and pieces until you're happy with it more of the violet watercolored stickers from the field notes collection and you'll notice I, I tie in the magenta color to the top because it's a strong color on the base and so I add it to the top with some of those ready-made die cuts that match your stamped floral images in the ephemera pack I'm using the puffy stickers again on this side to add to some of the centers that I didn't use the iridescent texture paste on and I'm adding some enamel dots from the first Fiki Booten line going back and adding a yellow enamel dot on the left page as well so here's the finished photos thanks thank you so much for joining me today I appreciate you spending your time on my channel and if I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe have a wonderful weekend and happy Mother's Day bye